Well, former CIA analyst Ray McGovern joining me now in studio to talk more about where the country stands today and why we invaded in the first place. Ray, I want to start. Here's some of the Iraq totals. Nearly 200,000 direct war deaths, 4,500 U.S. troops killed, millions of refugees, as Alexi just showed us, and trillions of dollars spent. This is the cost of the invasion. Where does the country stand today, and what's the impact that we see 13 years later? Well, there's still great controversy as to uh, why we went into Iraq. And the uh, conventional wisdom is this was just a terrible mistake by intelligence. You're talking about this argument of weapons of mass destruction Correct. and the intelligence given that there was something and then never ending up turning yeah. up. Yeah, the case was made by Cheney and the president and Powell and Rumsfeld. Uh, that Saddam Hussein had all manner of uh, weapons of mass destruction and he was likely to give them to terrorists. Okay, this is after 9-11, right? Mm -hmm. Fear, fear, fear. Now, uh, he didn't have all manner of weapons of mass destruction. We former intelligence analysts knew that and we warned the president with three memoranda before the war, don't listen to this. This is contrived. It's not a mistake. It's fraud. Was there good intelligence linking Saddam Hussein to Al Qaeda? Uh, that uh, Saddam, no. Uh, that the uh, effort was intensive by the Defense Department to get people to turn over every leaf to find evidence. There was none, and in that respect, the analysts of the CIA pretty much stood up to that pressure. Uh, they wouldn't be bought into saying that uh, there was this kind of connection because there wasn't any. Mm -hmm. uh, on weapons of mass destruction, they caved in, and we saw the results of that. Now, I was in Germany in September for a week. It was the first week that the flow of refugees uh, really, really zoomed. Uh, they were at every railroad station. Uh, and the press was full of stories about what, what should we do about them? You know, how many should we let in? But nobody in the establishment press there in Germany, and this is different from when I was there, Nobody raised the question, well, how come there are so many refugees? You know, why are they? <laughs> well, it also goes back, it also goes back to uh, the war in Iraq and the fact that we pretty much destroyed that country and Syria and now Libya. And, you know, it's, it's really uh, uh, people need to be held ac accountable for this. And now the evidence is documentary. The Downing Street memo, mm -hmm. that shows that George Tenet, the head of the CIA, told the head of British intelligence, in July of 2002, so, you know, eight months before the war, he said uh, that uh, the president has decided to make war on Iraq for regime change. Mm -hmm. The war would be justified by the conjunction of terrorism and weapons of mass destruction. You know, right. translation right. would say that he had all kinds of WMD and that he's likely to give them to terrorists. And then the, the sentence that uh, intelligence analysts and detectives lust after, mm -hmm. documentary evidence, the sentence says, but the intelligence and facts are being fixed, fixed around the policy. So well, there it was. We now know that for years leading up to the invasion, this was always the plan to kind of do something a bit more substantial when it comes to Iraq and the regime change. Mm -hmm. yeah. There was also the question of the UN resolution 1441 that Iraq wasn't following in line with. Um, people tout that as a reason mm -hmm. for the invasion. Is that a reason for the invasion? No, it was contrived. <clears throat> you know, there's a sort of a selective outrage about violations of UN resolutions. If you go back to November 1967, uh, resolution 242 said that Israel must withdraw from the occupied territories. Now, that was, what, 67? Was that three and a half decades ago? All right. Uh, they haven't. Mm -hmm. So why are we all exercised about the possibility that Iraq is violating uh, this or that UN resolution 
when we let Israel off scot-free. Now the Arabs see that, mm -hmm. and the Iraqis saw that, and everybody else, and so it ruins our credibility in that part of the world. We're running out of time here, so I want to ask you real sure. quick if this was done in the name of terror. Clearly, you know, there was a big patriotic effort after 9-11. You didn't really want to go against any militarized effort at that point or what we thought was something that would protect the American people. How do we stand today as opposed to in 2003 under the threat of terror? I have to tell you that it's the media that's the fly in the ointment. I've been here in town 50 years. Okay, I've seen a lot of change, but the biggest change is we no longer have, in any real sense, a free media. That's big, okay? And so if the administration wants to make another war, you can depend on the stenographers of our mainstream media to justify it. Well, we appreciate having you on for your expertise, former CIA analyst Ray McGovern. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.